somebody. Uh, but for the most part, you want to make sure that your racetrack is clear and ready to use so that you can take a little bit of that color and you blend. Put the colors in the department you're going to make. If you know you're going to make a green, I don't care if you're taking a reddish version of the green, mix it in the green department. Do not go mixing your phthalo blues over here. Would you like to show them my palette so they know what not to do? <laughs> what not yeah, to do? Yeah, I would say I think I do it all wrong. So basically, if you just take and mix straight out from the color, that's the area you're making your turquoises. This is the area you're going to be making your greens. Keep well, the rainbow wheel the same. You're dark, well, dark on the outside, white on the inside. You know, country Green western dancing, all the fast guys are running around the court on the outside. These are all the belly buckle rubbers on the inside. They're going really slow. The rest of us are here in the middle of the racetrack kind of blending around. Black is tucked in behind my two darkest colors. I would prefer that I would take a green and a purple to attempt to make a nice dark color first before I touch into a black. Black just has a tendency to kind of be flat. Whereas if you can get a green and a purple, you kind of have a, fun, a nicer version of variations and even throw in some reds and everything dark can go in there, frankly. And it's much more interesting of a dark than a flat, straight out of the tube, kind of a black. So I hide the black right behind my two darkest colors that psychologically I kind of have to get through the first round of colors before I get to touch the black. What color is your turquoise? Thalo turquoise. Thalo it is not turquoise. cobalt turquoise. I think you have uh -huh. cobalt turquoise. Cobalt so can you hold? Can you hold that up again? Yep. So here's thalo turquoise. Did it? Did it? Really pretty. Do you have that that I can use? Some? Yes. And then here's your. Yeah, that's your mine. Tube and it's not even turquoise. It's right. Chill. And then here's the next color available on the color chart. You can buy that tube of paint if you want to. And then you can buy this tube. Why buy four shades of when you just buy the darkest color? So it's thalo can blue. Can you hold it down a little more? Thalo turquoise. So phthalo turquoise. Oh, and that's what you have over here? Yes. Because I thought it said phthalo blue. Oh, well, it says actually phthalo green. I threw some phthalo blue in it. Oh, I mean damn, phthalo damn. Turquoise. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, I, so I'll, I'll take a squid. Just take a squid or a scoopy out of the, I think it's a, a bottle. And then the only fluorescent that I have in that's my palette. That's phthalo blue? Phthalo turquoise. Yes. I think I've got that. Okay. And then the fluorescent color is the only one I have on the palette fluorescent magenta. But if you're gonna do some poppies, I'm gonna walk this direction, Francine, as I scare your four viewers. <laughs> my armpit, at least they don't smell it. Okay. I have the fluorescent red and the fluorescent. Do they really glow? No, they're just bright, really bright colors. If you stick a black light on them, it looks like a 70s acid poster. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why they are fluorescent. They are not, I'm looking for the other term, hang on a sec here. Not glow in the dark. They're not phosphorescent. They don't, the more light you put on them, they suck up, and then when you turn the lights out, they glow. They're not that kind. They're just, also not, uh, how long will they last? Have you had any of your earlier I, paintings? I put three layers of varnish over the top of them to make sure they're light fast. And I use that Golden's polymer varnish because it does keep the lights. It is good. It's good. It keeps things from fading. If I'm doing some poppies and I really want something to glow a little bit more so, I might fudge and throw in some phthalo or some fluorescent colors in there. Yes, they stay. I've got someone down the uh, street who has one and it still looks fluorescent. Okay. Right? And if you want to look on my Facebook page, we just did a whole show and everything in it was fluorescent and we turned the lights off at night. We stuck black lights in the front window, so it looked really awesome. Hello. And then, with a glass of wine, we took... Turn that baby off. We looked through it with our fluorescent highlighting acid 3D glasses. <laughs> wine so. and not marijuana, huh? <laughs> yeah. Be done. We should do that kind of show. <laughs> They're 3D glasses. They take everything that's red, and, not red and, and they make they're not red and green. They're color wavelength. So when you look through them, all the red colors come Those forward. Those are really fun. I know. And you can buy them by oh the buy them by the pack. And they actually have the regular old glasses on them. But um, when we our store when we were doing the art gallery showing, I didn't want the uh, people to have to keep putting stuff over their ears. So I just cut the edges oh. off of them and attached it to a tape. And I think I've got. Here, I've got another one. Where do you buy that? So I went online and I 
I tied some of a, a paintbrush thing and no one would take off with them. All the ones on paintbrushes walked off. <laughs> so the rest I went on straws. Um, oh, wow. So it is based on a color wavelength, and I think that the title on it is Color Wavelength 3D, and it basically messes around. Is this it? No, the palette knife. Yes, thank you. I'm now very tired and I can't think. It messes with your eyes, though, like the jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of funky, but it's just kind of fun. And one of the gals in Monday's class, like, couldn't look through them. They they really upset her eyes and gave her a headache. So it's like, okay, we won't do that. No headaches allowed. Might be fun to paint through them. So basically, fluorescent <laughs> paints do add a lot of bright light, and when you turn a black light on them, they do glow like your 70s poster that you had on the wall right above your bed. It's a Van Halen. Okay. And it was on a black background. It looked really cool. So I gave you guys boards today that have molding paste on them, and if you can't figure out which side of the whiteboard says, if you hold it upright, you'll see a little shadow where the, the palette knife strokies are. The back side a little bit warmer yellow and, and paperish. The other one you have is a black one, and I don't have a black one to show you, but you have a black one. So you have a both a white and a black. Everybody's got a black one and a white one. So we'll do a little, I just wanted to do a little testing of all kinds of versions of ways to paint. You don't have to paint one direction or the other. So if you're thinking like a watercolorist, and I'll come back and do both if we're tempted. So, oh, looky, I have a bouquet of flowers. And when you are painting, or when you have a bouquet of flowers, I see Florette Farms is a great little um, cottage industry in our valley that's gone beyond being cottage. And she has these great demos and whatnot, and she was talking about how to make bouquets and, and do it professionally in large quantity. And she says you have your thrillers, your fillers, and your spillers. The main subject matter is your thriller. Your fillers would have been, and we had like baby's breath here earlier that was kind of deep, but little tiny, just kind of the fillers, you know, and then we had spillers and things that would fall and come, kind of come out. So when you think of painting, and I say have three values, light, medium, dark, when you're thinking of painting uh, a bouquet of flowers, you need to have big pieces, spiky pieces, and droopy pieces. So if I were to say, and so the white surfaces that I've given you guys are the regular molding paste, but just in straight white. I have some of that today if you want to try one of your canvases that way. But you can, on a wet surface, start to introduce your colors. You can fake in what you like. I'm got that now. When you have two things on a canvas side by side, your eye goes like this. Oh, I love this. Two little rabbits sitting on a field together. I want to buy this painting, but for some reason I can't make myself buy this painting. <laughs> Why can't I buy this painting? Your head's saying no. So be careful with twos going back and forth those. Try to make it a three, because then that's as close as you can get to a triangle, which without doing a whole little circle of storyline, is as close as you can get to kind of a circle. So when you're thinking of something, one is your big focal point, then a medium, down at a different height, and then some excitement, the part of that same color in a third spot. Yes, you will have little bits of the storyline elsewhere in your piece. And so your main subject matter gets thrown in first on a bouquet, on a, a bunny rabbit or the owls or whatever else we were doing. Your subject matter needs to kind of have some of that value thrown in first. So our subject is this awesome bouquet. Now because we're doing wet into wet on a white surface it's glowy. The light's going through that pigment bouncing off that white surface and kind of coming back out again. We are still working wet into wet. Hang on a second I'm just going to go a little complementary color. Complementary color near our main subject matter. Maybe our bouquet our base is that color. Maybe I'm having so much fun throwing in all these colors and I'm going to get carried away here in a minute. But I'm sticking with a storyline based on my color wheel that three fourths of my story is gonna be my subject matter supported by those colors. Preferably the most amount of detail and the largest value change of items is gonna be 
near where I want your eye to look. But for the time being, I'm telling myself it's a red and an orange story with touches of turquoise and maybe, ooh, purple. I'm gonna put purple in it too. She said it has to match somebody's couch, so I'm gonna put one of everything in here. And when you look at bouquets and you've put something together, if I were to say one thing doesn't belong in this particular bouquet, only because of the color itself, it's quite muted, the mauve version of the fireweed. Mm -hmm. If we were to paint it fluorescent pink, mm, 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 yes, it would probably go with this wild story color, but because it's mauve and can compare to the other pieces that are currently in there, it's almost dirty looking. Mm -hmm. That's okay as a support piece in the background. If that's your whole story and you love those mauve, dirty color, whatever, and you keep putting in flaming, look at me colors, these guys are just gonna disappear and go in the background. So be aware when you put a bouquet together that you've got colors that are gonna work together. Or if you're dying to make one your focal point, the mauve, make sure it's in there with muted other colors that are not quite as loud. Oh, excuse me, we're bleeding all over the place. <laughs> okay, so we're painting away. I need to get some darks in there to say it's some lights and some darks where all of the items come squishing together, you're gonna have some darks because all that product has been squished into one container. Could you prop up the color wheel? Yes, ma'am. Propping up the, oh, and it seems to wanna do the <laughs> rotating oh, thing oh. today. There we go, that work? I was having so much fun with my. <laughs> oh, <never mind. laughs> if it's not one thing, yeah, it's don't, another. Don't, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> and I went and I put in a cover and I. Oh, I really liked my my watercolory background. And I lost it all. I really wish I had saved my white. Oh no. Oh. Okay. We're gonna let it dry and come back to it because it's still a little. Mm, I can fudge. You can say, okay, I was inspired by that, but that's not what's there. I need to go find something that's not too whatever. I need to say, a story is about these guys. Maybe they've got some petals to them. Maybe they're turned slightly so that that's the underside of one. This could be another. I probably need to kind of do some, if it sends it pointing at the direction, I probably seen that. Oh, there's a stem. Here's a, I probably need a stem and some leaves. You can do what's called reverse painting. Hang on here. That way you guys kind of know where I'm going. Is that a watercolor uh, pencil or is it pastel? No, unfortunately, or it's an awful graphite? wash off of graphic and you're going to see it no matter what because it's a dark one and it's going to show up. So hopefully, if my white is thick enough, I can make it go away. You can go into a painting and do what's called reverse painting. You leave all of the subject matter there, what you were inspired by, and you get to go find all the parts that you wanted to keep. Then you can come back later on and put in some more details on that second layer. So we're still kind of working on what I'm calling the underwear. 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 <laughs> It's the underwear. Your underoos. <laughs> this is your underoo layer. Now, is that titanium white? Yes, it is. And I'm just driving two different brands of white as I touch into these for the moment, just so I sound really smart and I can say something to Kelly when she says, I don't like my white. She gave me what she thinks is a cheap white, so I'm trying to prove yes or right, right or wrong. I almost like the Liquitex basic cheap white better than the golden. Okay, how come? It just is smoother and for mixing and everything. You know, okay. um, just goes farther and does just as well, I, and I like the consistency better. What are your thoughts on using gesso as a white? And you can use gesso as a white. It does leave a matte finish because that's what gesso is for. Gesso is white paint with gypsum board ground up in it. Gypsum board is the same stuff you build your walls with, so when you do sheetrock and you have dust all over the house, that dust is what is in white paint that toothiness to the dust and the gesso, and the gesso the gypsum board gives paint a place to hang on to. It's kind of got a little toothy texture. So that's why gesso is awesome. 
I've had expensive canvases that are supposed to be triple primed show up at my house and I'll wet out that surface and it just gets baggy. So that bagginess, if it got wet, tells me they didn't seal off that cotton surface enough because that cotton is now absorbing the water and stretching out like our underwear and getting baggy. And once that dries, it tightens it back up again and seals some more. So even triple primed canvases from Windsor Newton were not awesome. I had some canvases show up that I swear were primed with oil-based gesso because every time I did a watercolor wash, it went beat up, beat beat, 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 beat it up and didn't stick together yeah. like our wet into wet stuff here. So this was kind of watercolory. We left a white surface. We came back and we captured some of our white surface. I can then fool around some more. So we're working very thin like a watercolorist on this piece. So if you want to experiment today, you're going to work thin on your white ones so that you leave yourself some awesome transparent paper stuff showing through. Uh, Mike was a rem stem, so I just want to change him green. Maybe make him a little green. Maybe have these guys have something. And when in doubt, flick. Hmm. And you get some wet into wet fun stuff to play around with on a white surface. You can always go back and fix what you didn't like by painting more white on it. So far I'm not finding something tremendously off awful with the white yet, but I also haven't mixed it well. Maybe I want to hide my pencil lines. I come in and kind of hide some of them. Some pencil lines are okay if you know how to draw well. If you've drawn, erased, drawn, erased, drawn, then you've roughed up the texture and the paint sticks weirdly differently there than it does somewhere else. So you just gotta have to figure out where your pencil lines are. I used to do a painting class with a bunch of um, retired architects. <laughs> Talk about make yourself feel bad. Do not hang out with retired architects. <laughs> Besides being perfect in all their drawing skills and they went, you know, two little lines and it looks exactly like what it needs to be. I'm going. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so suggestion of vase. I've been painting vase lately because I'm the poster artist for the Tulip Festival for next year. Congratulations. And I, I wanted to get my homework done early, so I started one version of it and turned it in already. So it's like, woo! Okay. My thrillers, my fillers, and spillers, if you like bouquets that hang both up and down. So maybe I have all up. Maybe I need to bring something. If you want to use a suggestion of a color, that's what's fun about flicking because you can get a suggestion of something tucked in somewhere without actually looking like, ooh, man-made, going on. All right, so that was kind of working wet and wet on a white surface. <laughs> like, remember hodgepodge, Mod Podge? Oh yeah, sure. So that's how thick this stuff is. Is it dry clear? Yes, ma'am. It's like Mod Podge? Yep. No, 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 I wanna put a little thinking up there. What am I going to put up there? This is deli paper. So when we're stamping and we have too much of a mess and I don't want to take, I, I stick this deli paper on my mess and I pick up the paint that I want to take and then I set this aside and let it dry. So I end up with a bunch of boogers all over a piece of paper that I get to use later on. And that's deli paper? Deli paper. Um, is that what they wrap your sandwiches in? I am deli? not sure where to get it because I got some in a class with Jackie Beck, J A Q U I, Beck B E C K, and she's got some videos on YouTube too, and her son does great videos. I called her up and said, "Can you tell me your your video production person? I'd like to do some videos like that." She said, "It was my son." <laughs> I called Bob Burridge. Say, Bob Burridge, I want to have a bit. It's my wife. I call up um, <laughs> Mike's. Danny, Mike Swab, Bob Bird, that was Bob Bird. Mike, Mike Swab, how do you do your workshop with my wife? Does all that work? So I want a wife. <laughs> or a son. Or a son. You got a son, but yeah. This is a thin version. Okay. Gel is a thick version. Okay. If you have a thin piece of paper, you can use thin glue. If you have a thicker piece okay. of something. Um, you do the thick stuff. Costco has deli paper, by the way. Oh, Costco has deli paper, guys. Sm a little smaller. Amazon has it for $4.95 for five hundred cheese. For deli paper? 
So you can paint, paint this first and then flop it down. And when it, that's the back side of the paper, so that was what it would look like if I used the back side. There's the front side, it's your choice. Ooh, that's too dark, but I like the idea of it, so I'm gonna put it back in this way. So your choice, every painting you do is a reflection of who you are, your choices. You cannot always paint like a Jennifer. You're gonna find that your own personality is gonna come through no matter what. So definitely enjoy your process and your learning and, oh, I love that, but I don't like this part of the painting process. You don't need, if you're a really good artist, you're gonna be happy with all the goofy things that happen. So you just leave that paper on there. Let it dry. Yeah. And at this point, just because I'm having fun, I'm going to say, well, what if I added some more? It's a, it's a little dark, so or but what if I, <coughs> you know, blah, blah, blah. So that is using, come on. So you can add stuff into your, that stuff, uh, your painting with the matte medium. So light items like tissue weight paper items can be glued on with a matte medium. Matte gel is nothing more than a, thick version of this and you can glue heavier items like the super thick papers or lumpies or whatever. Can you just you use tissue slices. paper? Yeah. Oh my god I forgot to put green in my painting. <laughs> 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 so this is nothing more than clear acrylic without any pigment in it. I could probably glue this green piece of paper in your green paint too. <coughs> you know, it's still the same stuff. Sometimes the tissue paper is not permanent, though it could fade. Fade, okay. Yeah. So be careful of tissue. Try to make sure you get stuff that's probably ar well, even archival. When you sandwich something between two layers of plastic and then you seal it with plastic, it's pretty archival. It's not getting much air to it, but the color might fade. <coughs> I'm not. You can't be guaranteed of what's going on. I feel like a, oh, we made uh, luminaries recently. You take balloons and you cover them with tissue paper with lots of glue and then you pop the balloon and stick a light in it with the sticks and walk in the street. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's what members of. Okay, so that's adding product to a painting. Rubber stamps. This is always cut away from you. Yeah. It's really hard, you know? You get to carve whatever shapes you want into it. What I did was I took one of these guys and I cut it in chunks first so that I wouldn't be overly whelmed to fit inside a square. And I cut a whole bunch of shapes. Where do you get those? So that's downstairs. Downstairs. <laughs> oh. So these were the ones that. Oh, it's yeah, near the speed. Sorts. It's in the speedball section. And that's what these guys are. I think are speedball carving tools okay. and, and is there a set that kind of has maybe a pink pad this they had the pink handle with individual blades um, they were out of the ones that had the blades inside so you want your paint to go on fairly thick pretend you're now a printer i let him talk me into getting the full sheet was this did was this a full sheet or did i have you? no idea someone went down no. and got that oh, for okay. me can you show me what did you get the big oh, one? It's about like that. I got the big sheet instead okay, of the so little sport. Get the big sheet. It looks like Don is doing it over here, making a bunch of them, right? Oh so yeah, Don come. is. Yeah, Don's back there cutting. Yeah. So yeah. you you take it, you cut whatever shape you want. Oh shoot, I'm gonna have to go a little higher. I just grabbed the little one for the demo for Jennifer. Trying to keep my budget low since I've already got a running tab going on. Throw it in the water, scrub it clean. Don't let the paint dry on it because then you start getting lumpy textures that you can't really, really, really control. So your choice on what you want to do: make a mess. Oh, too wet. Set some water out of there. Coat your stuff up. I'm not do the whole thing. Well, it's just amazing fun. all the different things you can do. <laughs> you don't want to edge, you kind of boggle through on the edge. So I guess what? There is no stopping <laughs> us. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, guess what? Have 15 of these going at the same time. That way when you screw up one, you go, that's okay, I'm going on to the next one. You come back later on, you go, oh, that wasn't a screw up. That was a great start to something else. 
Is that an illustration board that you're painting on? No, these are the mat boards that I got for you guys. It's El Cheapo mat board that I just put a layer of molding paste on one side. Yes. You get to come back in and say, oh, I loved everything about this. I, I want to reestablish the shape of my, my poppy and well, there's leaves, blah, blah. You know, you can always come back in and do stuff over the top. Um, so look up Jackie's uh, website. She has got this whole kind of free form art she has all kinds of textures, and then she just paints the outside shape of a kitty cat and a clothesline hanging with clothes. Jackie and Beck. Jackie Beck. And her stuff is kind of a blast to look at. It's it's me, structure person, kind of sort of had problems with, well, what's your composition? She goes, there is none. <laughs> what's your subject matter? There is none. <laughs> oh, oh, I was having a problem in the class. Um, chaos. <laughs> yeah, so it was a strict chaos. So I love it. We, we glued stuff on. We stamped stuff on. And your eye still goes too. And then we have the stencil work. <coughs> okay, I'm going to do white over the top just since I have so much going on right now. I want you to be able to see. You know, um, can you use like um, um, stamping up rubber stamps? Yeah. You know what this is? I'm writing with pencil and I had this over it. Eraser. It's an eraser. Okay. It is. I was gonna I never got around erasing yeah. with mine, but oh, it's yeah. they're gigantic erasers, you guys. Can, you can use an eraser. And I wonder if you can make oh. or something that's all right so you have a stencil. You don't want to brush too much because the stencils are so lightweight and thin the paint works their way under it. So you're gonna softly kind of Is that a sponge? Oh. That little face sponge. Or if you've got a brush you don't like that's kind of a stipple brush. That's like your Ooh. And then if you're really crazy, you turn it over and squish that paint on another surface. So stenciling. It, I went online to get these stencils. Stencils.com is I think where I ended up starting. But then once you get in there and discover the people that do airbrush body painting and turn you into a lizard with eyeballs coming out your elbows, they've got huge amounts of these guys that are really, really awesome. And so it's like, whoa, I found whole new websites with new art supplies on them, guys. <laughs> It might be x-rated, but... <laughs> this is true. The guy that I work next to at Tulip Town, uh, his name is Dutch, and he's been on CBS or ABC or in those paint off or whatever those competitions are. So nowadays, as he gets more and more famous, people...